My name's Rob, and I've been a developer, well, let's just say, for a long time. The problem I have found when I've been looking at various tutorials, books and videos, is they often show you the basics of something, but rarely in a way that you can apply in the real world. Click this button, something turns blue, for example. So what I've decided in this new series for 2022, for a beginner's guide to the React framework, is I want you to join me on a real life, real time journey I'm taking, where a customer has asked me to build a web administration system, a, a mobile React native application, and some Office 365 SharePoint web parts to talk to the system as well. All of them written in React. So no prior knowledge of React is needed. We're going to start with the React basics. Uh, let me show you the application so far. I've built it using the latest version of React, using the latest techniques such as React Hooks and Microsoft's Fluent user interface. Now, this is a real application. It's not just a bunch of demos that don't make any real sense. It reads data, creates data, updates customer information, has slide out forms, validation, and it authenticates using the Auth0 library. Now, I'm going to be building the application using the React JavaScript framework using functional components or hooks, as you may have heard them known as. I don't want to waste any of your time on the content you don't need to learn. So the goal of this series is by the end of it, we should have covered all the essential information you need to develop an application yourself. So what skills do you need to follow along? Well, it would be good to have basic familiarity with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and object-oriented programming, but it's not essential. Don't worry if you don't know these things. If this is all new to you, we'll go slowly. So, without further ado, let's dive straight in. So my name's Rob. You may have seen some of uh, our other videos on our channel to do with SharePoint and .NET. But in this first episode, we're going to take a brief look at what makes up a web page and what is React and what it allows you to do. Now, if there is anything specific you would like me to cover or you've got any questions, please stick them in the comments or send us an email and I'll be best to answer as soon as I can. So question number one, what is a JavaScript framework? Well, in its most basic sense, a web page is made up of three elements. Number one is the HTML, the hypertext markup language. Now, I like to think of that as kind of the building blocks of your web page. Then the second thing is CSS, cascading style sheets. These add the color and the size and all these elements to your HTML page. And finally, we have the JavaScript code. This is the, the magic that brings it all alive. So the HTML tells your browser the structure of a web page, the layout and the elements that are found in the page, the headings, the content, the images, a bit like empty rooms in a house. The CSS tells your browser how to style each of these elements. Your text is blue, the background is red, etc. A bit like adding the decor to a house. And the JavaScript tells your browser how each element works, i.e. click a button like a light switch and uh, the light comes on. So click a button on your page and the text in you know, a heading changes perhaps or the color changes. Now a JavaScript framework in the most basic sense is a rich set of functions that allow you to have complete control over manipulating the web page within the browser. There are many out there that you may have heard of. jQuery, Angular, Vue, the list goes on. So what is React? Well, React is a framework first released by Facebook in 2013. Its purpose, to speed up and simplify the front-end development process for creating something called Single Page Applications, or SPAs. What is a single page application, you may ask? Well, in a page, most web applications were traditionally server-side applications. 
The server holds the business logic, stores data, and then renders the website to the client or the browser in this case. When a client clicks on the link, it sends a request to the server and the server will handle this request and send back a response or data with HTML code, which the browser will then render and you as the user then view the web page. So you make a request, the server handles it and sends back all the code to your browser. Now, the problem with this approach here is that the server can receive a lot of requests. For example, when you go to the website and click on the home page, we send a request for which the server has to respond. We click the customer's page and it sends another request and the server has to respond. We click the reports and it sends another request and again the server responds. Essentially, traditional websites of independent HTML pages, when the user navigates these pages, then the browser will request and load different HTML documents. So the downside to this approach is that many requests produce many responses, which incurs a lot of time, a lot of resources are spent on these tasks, and from a user's point of view, it makes the user believe that the website is slow or maybe even that the web app has stopped. So therefore, JavaScript frameworks were developed. Now, React brings the solution where we don't always have to load new pages each time there is an action from a user. A user still clicks on various links in React in their single page application. And this time the client handles the requests on its own. It will re-render the page through JavaScript. So no data from a server is needed. And this is much faster as we don't have to send data over the internet. The client doesn't have to wait for the response and the server doesn't have to render the response. Another feature of a React single page application is a browser loads one HTML document and then navigates through the site and they stay on the same page as its JavaScript loads and unloads different views of the apps onto the same page itself. Now the user gets the feeling that they're navigating through pages, but all the time they're on the same HTML page. Now to do this, React needs to manipulate what's called the DOM. So that leads to the next question, what is the DOM? Well, DOM stands for Document Object Model. So according to W3C or the World Wide Web Consortium, the DOM is defined as, wait for it, a platform and language neutral interface that allows programs and scripts to dynamically access and update the content structure and style of a document. <laughs> so in plain English, the HTML DOM is a standard object model and programming interface for HTML. It allows you to change things on the page that you're rendering. What does it do? Well, the DOM defines the HTML elements, the headers, the images as objects. It defines the properties of all these elements, the size, the width, um, what happens when you, uh, when you render the page. It renders the methods to allow you to access the HTML documents. So when I do this, update this image, when I do this, change this header. The events for all HTML elements. So a button's been clicked, for example. So basically the HTML DOM is a standard for how to get, change, add or delete HTML elements. So loading and unloading views of the same page requires manipulating DOM elements. Such DOM operations involve adding children elements, removing subtrees of elements, and this can be really slow. So this is where React addresses this shortcoming in manipulating document object model elements efficiently. It does this by updating the browser DOM for us. With React, we don't actually interact with the DOM directly. We instead interact with what's called a virtual DOM, which React uses to construct the actual DOM or the actual document object model, the actual document. 
So the virtual DOM is made up of React elements which look similar to HTML but are essentially JavaScript objects. And it's much faster to work with JavaScript objects. It, the browser is optimized to work with JavaScript. And it's much faster than working with the document object model API or programming interface directly. Now you'll see as we go through these tutorials that you'll, these are stored as JSX files or in our case TSX because we're going to be using TypeScript. Don't worry about any of this at the moment. We'll look at the detail in later episodes. Now we make changes to the JavaScript object, the virtual DOM and the React renders these changes for us as efficiently as possible. So of course we need to talk to the server from time to time to refresh the data, post back changes, etc. However, when we do talk to the server, we do it asynchronously, which means we still re-render the page instantly and then we wait for the new data to arrive and then we incorporate it and only re-render part of the page that that data is dependent on. And this gives a fast, fluid experience. So as mentioned at the outset, not only can we develop single page web applications with React, React Native allows us to develop iOS, Apple, and Android native apps with React. So in conclusion for this first episode, I hope you found this brief introduction useful. Join me next time, not only on my React journey where we'll look at React components, but we'll also set up our development environment, investigate the React project files, and build our first React web application. Now, to get notified when the next episode is released, please click the subscribe button and the uh, notification button. I really appreciate you joining me on this journey. I'll see you next time. Now, if you're interested in more development, click here for the latest video. And when the next episode becomes available, you'll see a link to it here as well. If you've enjoyed this video, then please do give us a like. And if you like this kind of content, then do make sure you subscribe and ring that bell icon so you never miss out on a video. And if you want to join us on our developer journey, see the link below. And if you're feeling generous, buy us a coffee. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for your time. Happy coding. We'll see you next time.